became a speaker so that I could teach people what I do, not to speak about myself. So I do have to, obviously, I always say that when I do my talks, I do have to speak about myself in order to teach you, but um, it's more important that you learn from me than you hear me present something to you. So um, I have got my story packed down into what I think is my formula of how I did it, and it's um, going to unfold over the next three days. So my intro is about describing to everybody what it is um, that I do and how it is that I'm standing here right now. So I'm just going to go through that. I'm going to then launch into um, what I think desirable product is and what I think women want in terms of portrait photography and why my business became successful. So um, it really starts in the 80s. <laughs> it's, uh, the glamour was the biggest trend in photography in the 80s, in the late 80s, and I was 20 years old. So um, I watched, I walked into this market uh, as a retoucher, as a professional retoucher, and what I did was I found that uh, the photography was really boring at the time. I was 20 years old, it was babies, it was really boring family portrait with brown backgrounds and then the blue background came in and, and we started to really you know, fire things up and wedding photography was incredibly boring as well. And then one day somebody came in with a studio and put some glamour photography in front of me and I was a retoucher at 18. So I saw glamour photography and I said, that's it. This is what I want to do, I want to do this. So um, I bought a camera and I started to teach myself photography and I spent four years as a professional retoucher. So as those four years unfolded, I was shooting on a Minolta X300 and I was just shooting anything that moved, my friends, my friends' children, anything. Um, and I was just trying to upskill and upskill and upskill. And by the time I was 22, I walked into New Zealand's leading glamour studio as their studio manager and their retoucher. And within two years, I was shooting full time on the floor. So by the time I was 24 or 25, I was um, shooting portrait glamour. So what then happened in our market in the early 90s is it died completely away and we weren't allowed to call it glamour anymore. So it has such a negative connotation to it, the word glamour, that when you actually say it, people physically blanch. And so um, what I did was I didn't want to shoot children and I didn't want to shoot car weddings. So um, I make this quite um, well known to everybody. I would rather stick pins in my eyes than shoot a wedding um, and lick a power socket. Like I, I decided back then that I was never going to shoot weddings and I don't shoot babies either. So um, all I had to do was keep glamour alive because my boss said if I could keep the makeover portraiture side of things alive, then I could sustain a business and a stream of income into our studio, then I could keep it alive. So I just started to evolve it. So mid 90s, I'm reading Black and White magazine and Black and White magazine is just the thing to read. It's got nude, it's got Herb Ritz, it's such a beautiful magazine and I'm, I'm just buying it every week and soaking it up and trying to learn natural light photography. Gone is the soft focus and the boas, gone are the coloured backdrops and the five glamour poses and the windows opened up in the studio and it's a studio very similar to this. We had big windows and lots of nice raw concrete walls and all of a sudden I was trying to evolve into something else. But the problem was I was not allowed to call it what it was known for. So I really spent 10 or 15 years being a nothing, a nobody. Nobody identified with my, my folio, nobody really identified with me, and I wasn't really a notable genre, genre, sorry. So I wasn't really um, making my mark. I was just trying to service the clients that I was marketing, direct, marketing directly to. So Darwin says it's not the strongest of species nor the most intelligent that survives, but the one that is the most adaptable to change. So when people talk about change in our industry, I've been a photographer now for 22 years, and I've seen nothing but change, okay? I was there when they invented Photoshop. I trialed the first Photoshop. I said, that's never gonna catch on. You know, I absolutely um, hated the first digital camera, the second digital camera, the third digital camera. I, I spent the first 10 years shooting on a medium format Hasselblad, and then somebody took my film away, they took my $12,000 beautiful big camera away, and all of a sudden I've got this crappy, you know, shoots JPEGs, flares, throws magenta, $20,000 35mm format, and they were just like, change. And then they removed my retouching and we started to shoot, we were shooting film, scanning our work and trying to learn Photoshop. 
and it was so limited and I had to try and learn that. Um, when we finally got through the sort of technology and we finally started to evolve, that technology is evolving so fast that I can't, I, you can't keep up with it anyway. I'm always learning something new. So when photographers say, what's the state of our industry and where are we going? I always say, listen, it's, it's been changing the whole time I've been in it. So just embrace it and be as adaptable as you can. And if you're not learning, you're not growing. If you're not growing, go and do something else because it's such an exciting industry. Um, about 12 years ago, um, 13 years ago actually, 99, uh, this was all shot on medium format. So this was me changing from the glamour into my style now. So I found my style very early. So the first thing I'm gonna ask you as a photographer is what is your style? Do you know what it is? And if you don't know what it is, I suggest you find one immediately. And it must be one that you really want to do because until you define who you are, you cannot create a product and a market or a marketing plan or a promotion plan until you can identify who you are. Because until you identify, identify who you are, you can't really put it out there. So my style came forward really fast, really quickly. It was about a natural light glamour. I wanted that contemporary magazine feel. Um, I showed this to um, the people I worked with at the time. They said, nobody's going to buy it. You've cut everybody's head off. Nobody's smiling. Nobody's looking at the camera. Okay, so really what it came down to for me was at that moment, I was sort of um, mid to late 20s. I was really finding myself in photography and everybody was rubbishing what I was doing, but I had to hold inside what I believed I could keep to. So the, the idea really is, is when you're at rock bottom in terms of earning money, it doesn't matter what you do because I can't go backwards. I just have to hold to what it is that I want and try and make an income out of it. So if you fast forward 13 years, my brand has not changed. It's the same. It's exactly the same. Um, so that tells me that I found my style and now I've spent the last 15 years developing the service around it, the business around it, the marketing around it. And so I really, I know that your style will evolve and I know that I have evolved so much of myself, but as soon as you identify who you are, it just makes it so much easier to create a business out of it. So all of a sudden, I think I realized that I knew what women want. So my brand speaks to females. Yes, it does. It is a woman driven brand. Now that does not mean I don't photograph men because I photograph husbands and boyfriends and partners and the more you include the men into your studio, the more income you will make. But what I do is I market my brand to women. So when I talk to studios, I know one thing, who's ringing you to book the wedding? The bride. Okay, I've been in studios for 22 years. I've had one groom book a wedding. I know it's becoming more popular now for the boys to be arranging it, but for the last 22 years, I've been booking brides. Um, who books the baby shoot, the maternity shoot, the boudoir shoot, the glamour shoot? You know, who does that? The girls do it, right? So I think there's just definitely a different way we sell to women. The women wake up in the morning and go, you know what, I want to experience what it feels like to be that. The guys don't wake up and go, I'm, I really want to spend $3,000 on photography today because we have a different way of thinking about it. So my brand was based on what it is women want. Women want to look younger, slimmer and gorgeous. Wouldn't you agree? I photographed over 5,000 women and I've never had one say, could you make me a little wider in low light? Yeah. They want to feel beautiful inside and out. Feel beautiful inside and out and world peace. That's pretty much it, right? So we want to look younger, slimmer, gorgeous. We want to look and feel beautiful inside and out. We want everybody just to get along. So I'm not a boudoir photographer, and um, but I'm going to address this because obviously in my Creative Life video I said I don't shoot bums. Now I have, I do not dislike the boudoir genre. I think it's beautiful. I, when I look at boudoir photographers, that classic boudoir that you see everywhere in the American market is definitely full of it, more so than Australia, New Zealand, and perhaps other countries. Um, big props to the boudoir market, it's, it's beautiful. But I believe, and, and I'm very outspoken about this, so you can challenge this in the chat rooms if you want, I believe that is 3% of the market. I believe my market is a lot bigger. 
I believe that after photographing 5,000 women, I have never had one ask me to take a photograph of their bum. So whether I'm attracting a different type of client, I don't know. And I believe that there is a huge connection between the images you show and the clients that you attract into your business. This image here, as beautiful as her bum is, does not make me want to show you mine. In fact, that one says to me, your bum doesn't look like mine. So that could be a double-edged sword there, right there. And so I feel sometimes boudoir can push people further away than bring it in. So instead of saying, I'm anti-boudoir, because I take shots like this, which would imply to you that I am a boudoir photographer. But the difference between me is that really everything I shoot is about the face. Okay, so everything I shoot is about the face and every part of the image after that drops away. So I'm going to teach you that. I'm going to teach you how I do that. You'll notice I have two eye lines. Two. Okay, so none of my poses or anything are models or looking away or connecting in any other way. There are only two ways that you connect personally to a camera, in my camera. One is directly to the camera, straight through, and the other one is down your own body line. Because this to me, these two eye lines say to me, I'm looking straight at you, and the own body line says, I'm in my own self, in my own energy. Um, but if I'm looking away, or I'm doing any of the other eye lines, I feel like it's more of a model type pose and not a portrait. So what I'm trying to do is bridge the gap between boudoir, portrait, contemporary portrait, rolling it all together and creating something that is entirely beautiful and magazine that sits in that square crop. So you also notice I shoot everybody directly straight on in the face, flat lit with a reflector bouncing back this way. So obviously now that you hear me explain my work, you're gonna see a lot of consistency in my work because all of it is the same. All of it is exactly the same line, same eye line, same feeling to it. So my evolution was based on one simple question. Who are you trying to attract as a client? So when I started my business, people said to me, you cannot, you cannot put a website up with just glamour photos. Who's going to come and do that? And I said, but I don't shoot babies and I don't shoot weddings and I'm not going to show that because those are the clients that I'm going to get and I don't do those things. So if I just showed a website with glamour photography, then I'm only going to get glamour shoots, correct? Now, I've currently at that stage got no money. So if I don't attract anybody else but glamour, what does it matter? I can't go backwards. If I start out, that, and so really I stumbled across that desire to only shoot what it is that you really want out of necessity. Because I figured that nobody could make me shoot something I didn't want because I had to. Do you know how many photographers I talk to tell me they hate doing something? I hate it. I go, why do you do it? Oh, the money. It's not, you know, resistance and, and all of that just creates more negative in your life. Stop doing the things you don't like now and focus only on the things you love. You will find a way to create an income. You will find a way to create an income if you truly love it. Because you, you become this force of nature. I believe a woman's beauty is here. Okay, so I'm starting all of these phrases with I believe. Okay, this is my experience, this is my opinion. I believe a woman's beauty exists from the top of her head out to the outside of her shoulders to the bottom of her decolletage. Everything that I study about body language, about human behavior, about beauty, seems to involve this diamond. I do not close this diamond down, I enhance it. So now that you see my work, you're going to try and see that everything I try and shoot, I try and enhance this diamond, this area, because I believe that is where it, all of that beauty comes forward, right down through the heart. And I'll explain all the body language to it next. I believe that my brand now 
has become very feminine in terms of what it is that I'm doing with the way that I'm posing. Remember, posing, posing, a pose is a pose, a static pose. I look at it, it's directing, right? We're directing them to relax and touch their bodies and move, and we're directing a look, we're directing an eye line. So I believe that when my brand now sort of speaks of a very feminine, modern, contemporary glamour, and that's what I'm trying to achieve, when I show images like this. The one question I think I get asked more than anything is, um, why is your work so feminine? Can a man do this? And yes, can a woman who doesn't have the sensuality in herself direct somebody else to be sensual on themselves? Yes. So, yes, do you know why? Because I've seen it. I was taught by a man a man who loves women. He just loves women, he's comfortable around them, he directs them, and he loves women. And he taught me, and then I kept going, and I've taught people without that sensuality in themselves, and they can direct it and bring it forward in others. Because they're just rules. They're simple rules that I follow that I'm gonna teach you. So my brand now is sort of, has this look about it, but the second question I guess I get asked more than anything is how do you get people to look at you like that? But you know, the weird thing is, is they're not looking at me, they're looking in the camera. Because when that big black camera covers my face and that self-conscious veil comes over the client that you're looking at, everybody knows that, that feeling like they can be quite relaxed and look quite beautiful and then the camera comes up and the mouth goes completely stiff and and the eyebrows go up and, and everybody's holding their body and all of a sudden all of, all of the expression is gone. When that happens, you have to remove that. So that's something else I'm gonna teach you today because this is what I call connection. And if you look at my images, you will not find one without that connection. And that's how you sell portraits. It's all very well to do beautiful poses and beautiful hair and makeup, but any photograph that has that direct connection to you as a photographer will sell to your client because that is the most important aspect of what we do is connecting with our clients. Um, I really think my business went, uh, exploded for me when I started to ask this question, who is your target market? Um, people do not know the answer to this question. Who is your target market? You know, do you know who your target market is? Can you see her walking towards you? Do you say, she's my client? Right there, bang, that's the one I want. Somebody asked me a long time ago, who is your target market? And I said, all women aged eight to 80. And he said, that's not a demographic. And I said, yeah, it is. It is, that's my demographic. So I want all women, all sizes, all ages, eight to 80. A lot of people ask me, if you could photograph anybody in the world, who would it be? I get asked that question all the time in interviews. You know, I think they think I'm gonna say Angelina Jolie or something, although I'd like to meet her. Um, I don't wanna photograph anybody famous. I wanna photograph Sandra from Canada and Amanda from Florida, you know, and Ty from Nigeria and Mapuana from Hawaii. I wanna photograph any woman in the world so, this is so stupid because I'm going to cry already and it's like the first half an hour. Um, any woman in the world who's ever looked in the mirror and not felt good enough about herself at any time in her life. I want to photograph her every year through the changes of her teenage life, through her 20s, through her 30s, through her 40s, through her 50s, and as she flowers into her most beautifulness, I want to photograph her every year of her life to watch and celebrate the changes of who she is and what she is so that she can experience how she looks to other people. It does not interest me to photograph famous people or beautiful people that have already been photographed a million times. That's who I want to photograph. So that is my demographic. If I make that clear, that's who I attract. Um, my brand opened when I started to say, I don't just shoot glamour because I can shoot couples too. And then all of a sudden he's involved. And when he's involved, then my sale doubles. But the cool part is, is He's not on my website, she's on my website, because he comes with her. By the way, he's like, Ken comes with Barbie. <laughs> I know she's watching, so I'm just, you know. 
Um, I'm photographing their wedding in May. You know how I said I'd rather stick pins in my eyes? Well, uh, not for this one, because when I meet special people like that and they say, you know, you have to photograph our wedding, I'll go and do that. Yeah. So my market opened when I shot faces. Do you know how many people would walk into my studio over 20 years and say, it's just my face, right? Just my face. You're just going to do my face. Who said that? Just up here, right? You're just going to focus on the top half? The truth is, is that um, the face shot for me is a signature shot. And it's a shot a lot of photographers don't do. It cannot be cropped from a distance. It must be photographed like that. Um, I started to open up sisters, mothers, best friends. I'm going to talk. On the third day, I'm going to talk about expanding your marketing to the entire inner circle. But as soon as I started to show these images in my work, as soon as I started to show sisters and mothers and best friends and couples and families, then all of a sudden my shoots exploded, not from one girl coming in for a glamour shoot, but for six girls coming in for a girl's day out. Now six different girls in one day, six different sales. And I learnt the power of the inner circle. So long before I read the science of marketing to women, I started to understand that women don't go to the toilet on their own. Women don't go to the toilet on their own. They get up to go to the bathroom at a nightclub or a restaurant or wherever you are, and they go, I'm just going to the restroom. We say bathroom, you say restroom. Okay, the rest of the world knows what we're talking about. And the, your friends go, I'm coming with you. And all of a sudden, the social network in the woman's bathroom is quite amazing. And just so you know, guys, we come out of the bathroom, we put our lip gloss on, lip gloss on we gossip, we all talk to each other. We have a grand old time and we say, oh my God, I love your shoes. And we oh cool, I love your hair, thank you. We put on lip gloss, we chat to each other. This does not go on at the men's urinal. <laughs> you know, you, I'm sure you guys aren't in there, you know, having a go, I love your shoes, don't look at me, dude. <laughs> uh, you know, we have this social network because this is another thing I've learnt. Women speak on average of 12,000 words a day and men speak on average of 3,000. So we have more words than you. And long after we've exhausted your ear, when you've had a guts full of us, we'll turn to our girlfriends, our sisters, our mothers, to expel the rest of them. Because we can't possibly go to, go to bed with 9,000 words banked. Do you have any idea how much that's going to keep us awake? So, you know, you do the yes, dear, yes, dear, we keep on talking. So that makes us the most powerful networkers in the world currently. Now, if I photograph sisters and a mum like that and I market to them as the makeover experience, they each see this beautiful individual print, if I market to these women as a glamour shoot, then really what I'm doing is a family shoot, right? So I've got a family shoot with three adult women, all of whom have children, a husband, grandchildren. So these women are connected to a family of four, a family of four, um, her family of five children plus spouses plus grandchildren plus her husband, every one of these people are connected to 18 others. And as one group, as one group of shoot, I'm marketing glamour, but this is what I'm selling to. So you can see how clever, how, how well I've managed to morph my brand um, to attract the female client, but then open it up to a family market that spends dollars on portrait shoots. So then I started to show before and afters. Because before and afters, to me, were the single denominator that said, you are not only achievable, you, you, anybody can do this. And I started to say, I didn't want them to look bad in their before and after. Sometimes I shoot the before and after with makeup on. If the before and after is bad, I will retouch it. But what it did was I put a before and after gallery on my website and the hits on that gallery went nuts because what people wanted, what people love is the transformation. And interestingly enough, why are we so captivated by the transformation? Like why can't we just appreciate her beauty without opening that up and going, oh, look at that, because people love the before and after. Now pop culture tells me that your behind the scenes, your Kardashians earned $66 million last year, your 
behind the scenes, your reality TV, your makeover transformation shows, your weight loss transformation shows, your plastic surgery transformation shows, your everything transformation, house transformation, life transformation, money transformation, Dr. Phil, Oprah, everything that you tell me about your TV, which we love, which we as consumers love, tells me you can be a better person. At any time, anybody can improve themselves and at any time, anybody can be better. And once I started to include the before and after, what it did was it started to tell my clients what it is that I did. That speaks volumes to you, doesn't it? Girl next door, total hottie, pal. And who looks good when they wake up in the morning? Really? I had to show curvy girls in my advertising and I had to show curvy girls. We d just so you know, um, we're at day one. You'll never hear the word, this is the only time you're gonna hear me say plus size as two words after each other. I think that has gotta be the single most revolting term in the history of all anything, plus size. So you are not like everybody else. And I say girls with curves, you can say whatever you want. Why say anything at all? Just girls, you know? Um, average BMI for a supermodel 20 years ago was 8% lower than the average female in the world, and now it's 23% low. 90% of the models currently in Europe have an anorexic BMI. And then we're telling girls that she's not normal. And, and she is a majority in this world. Now, I am not anti the zero size movement. If you want to live like Posh Spice, fabulous. I wish I could, you know, but I can't. But what I'm saying is everybody, you must open your market to everybody. Stop showing young, skinny models in your advertising and wondering why you are not attracting a different type of client. Okay, you must open the reality of your brand up to every woman. And as soon as you do that, every woman will come. So somebody came up to me after my talk in Vegas and they said, I finally understand. I shoot seniors, but I want the mother and daughter shoot. But I don't get the mothers. Why don't the mothers want to be photographed by me? And I say, what mothers are you showing in your advertising? Are they real women? Are they, okay, real women, I have to address that. When I say real women, I'm not discrediting thin, beautiful women. But you know, at the end of the day, when I say real women, I mean, are they, are they marketing wise, achievable to the everyday market? Are you looking at this person and saying, she looks like my, my girl next door, right? She does. She is a real woman to me. She is somebody who was nervous about being photographed, who came into my studio going, you know what? I read your message on your blog that said, love yourself now. And she said, I could have come in and said, look, I'm going to lose 40 pounds. But she said, why? I need to love myself right now. I'm doing this right now. You know, that to me says that I spoke to her and my message was very clear that I'm available to her. Now, I'm, I feel so passionately about this because I see so many disconnected brands. I constantly open websites and look at brands and see that they are not showing a real client. They're not showing the reality of what it is that we're doing every day. And they're showing that beautiful, unachievable client that doesn't spend any money. So just so you know, I have had people say, well, I'm not interested in that mummy market or that older market. If you don't want that market, you can leave all of them for me because I'll take them. Yeah, not a problem at all. I want to make it achievable that no matter how beautiful you are, no matter if you have skin disorders or whatever, that I can photograph you. And I want to tell stories around each of my shoots so that you identify with her as a woman, that you identify her as somebody who, you know, struggled to be photographed because she felt like she was in a place where, can I be photographed beautifully? You know, I photographed this woman because I gave a talk in Melbourne in Australia and she's so beautiful, she's sitting in the audience and she said, you talked for an hour, but you said one thing that resonated with me. And I said, what was that? She said, I know what beautiful looks like. 
When you said that, when you said, I know what beautiful looks like and I can find that in you because everybody has it, I know what beautiful looks like. She said, when you said that, I just knew you could find mine and I wanted you to find that beautiful in me. Um, 80, because 80 is beautiful and 80 comes with daughters and more daughters and, and a network of people. So all women, all ages. About 2003, I'd been shooting in the studio for 11 years, for 10 to 11 years, and I'd built this amazing folio. I had already defined my style. Glamour photography was a distant memory. And one of the most amazing parts about that was that I really had kind of called myself contemporary portrait, but I still employed a full-time makeup artist that was also a receptionist. So she had a dual role, which is the only reason that her job survived through that era. Because I felt that it was still important that we were putting makeup on people. Fast forward to 2003, and I was still earning four or five hundred dollars a week as a wage. And in my 30s, that wasn't enough. So I made the distinct choice of going out into business. Now at this stage, I turned up every day at nine o'clock, I took photographs, and then I left at five, just like that. I had a job, and my job was to take beautiful photographs, and I did that. So all of a sudden, I'm faced with starting my own business, and I had no idea how to market, sell, no idea how to um, play tax. I had no idea how to create a website, design a brand. I, had, I could not sell my own work. I was lucky to get a $400 CD at that time, even though my work looked like it did. So do you understand? It doesn't matter how good your work is. Until you learn how to sustain an income and a business from photography, you will not. You will not. No matter how good you are, people don't buy it just because it's good. People buy it because of the way it's sold to them, of how it's presented to them, of how your business is set up. So I, I was shooting really beautifully at that time and making no money. So just to be awesomely, um, you know, I also had no money. So I had to start a business with zero income and a 10D, Canon 10D. Okay, so it's like an eight megapixel camera. One lens, a 24105, and nothing else, a laptop and a mouse. I didn't even have a Wacom tablet. I would retouch, <coughs> click, 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 click. So all of a sudden, I am go, well, I'm going into business. Awesome, nothing. And I lived a half an hour out of the main city in New Zealand in a country cottage, okay? And I had a four car garage, which I converted into a studio. So I'm gonna tell you on day three, when we talk business, I'm gonna show you how 15 weeks later, we earned $20,000 and I could not believe how we managed to achieve that. So I built a business by borrowing $3,000 off my mum and dad, which I paid back tenfold. And a year after that, I built an inner city studio. And it's quite weird because at that moment, I exploded onto our market and yet I had been a photographer for 10 years at that time. If I could give anybody a piece of advice about building a business like that, I would say that um, you have to give everything you've got to make something like that big, make something that big work. But anybody can do this. I have no, I have no education. I have no marketing degree. I have no business degree. I'm not even trained as a photographer. I was told a million times I would never be able to achieve it. And I believed it because whatever you believe becomes true for you. And I'm not a rich wife yet, and I'm not a trust fund baby. I've got blue collared workers, parents. My parents worked their whole lives and they still work now and they're 65. And they taught me how to work hard and the rest I learned as I went along. So anybody can do this, anybody. I'm not, I'm not special, I'm not, you know, I'm just a hard worker and I'm very competitive. Um, I'm going to read this to you now because it's very important. The time will come when with elation you will greet yourself arriving at your own door. 
in your own mirror and each will smile at the other's welcome and say sit here and eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life, whom you ignored for another. It's about falling in love with yourself. And this is my philosophy, and the philosophy is in the floor of our studio when we built it, because I wanted people to understand that when they came to me. That until you honour and value your time, until you honour and value yourself, you will not create anything with it, you will not get paid for it, you will not be honoured for it, because you do not honour it in yourself. If that is my my philosophy in how I built everything, then that would be it right there. Uh, what I love about this poem, which was written by Derek Walcott, is take down from the bookshelf, the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes, peel your own image from the mirror and sit and feast on your life. Does that not describe what we do? You sit down, you see yourself, you give yourself the time that you've given away all of your life, you peel your own image from the mirror, which would be a photograph, you sit and then you feast on your life. You see yourself, you fall in love with yourself. For me, that sums up everything that I do in my business. And I love it. This has been on my wall for eight years. It's written by Paul Arden. It's actually from the book, it's not how good you are, it's how good you want to be that talent will get you far, but not as far as ambition. Okay, some of the most successful people in this world are the least talented. And that's something I always address in my talks. How many of you have sat at a computer surfing other photographers' websites, saying, I just don't understand why they're so successful when I'm clearly so much more talented than they are? I did that. I did that for years. I sat down without realising that my attitude was just all about they have it and I don't and that's weird because I'm way more than them. And I was nothing because that is just the voice of a blocked artist sitting at home criticising others who are actually out there doing it. And that is the first message that you need to get up and take action. I'm going to talk on the third day about creating that style and then all of a sudden the brand and the product that goes with it because my brand and my product suddenly became very clear about what it is that I do. And I'm going to teach you about the two types of photographers that make money, the sitting fee and the a la carte. Um, I'm going to show you how I have simplified my price list so much that I have made it easy for people to buy from me. And when I look at the products that I sell, and I'm going to show you all of these and I've bought them with me, and how easy it is to understand both my price list and what I charge, then you can see why when we opened our studio we had an average sale of $1,800 uh, from a single girl. And now my average on my own in Sydney is 3300 